from Malvern House Oscars International, where I moved up from experience officer to student support manager, then to center manager, and then I left to go to eBay. And the reason why I made such a dramatic move was because I really felt that I wasn't getting what I wanted being in the English language industry. I felt that there was a lack of procedures, there was a lack of career development for staff, and accountability. And then as well, talking about the agents and some of the expectations and having me there delivering bad news on a constant basis was quite uh, challenging. So the move to eBay has, now I'm back obviously in English language, and what I did was I came back with much more insight and from a corporate um, climate. So I worked for eBay Concierge and there you have 14 weeks training in customer service before you can go onto the floor. And this is somebody looking at every conversation you have, every email and every chat looking at that in so much depth that the next time they come back and they know your name, they know that you help them, that you've resolved the situation, and that you don't break that promise. Whether it's one call, two calls, three calls, it doesn't matter. You are in contact with them on a regular basis. And so then going from Oscars and Malvern, then to eBay, now going into the English studio, this is a new venture for me, and what I wanted to do was really to create a culture, and they needed it when I arrived. So I didn't put too much text. I didn't put any, really. I just put photographs, because customer service is what I believe in. I'm extremely passionate about it, and I think I'm really good at it as well. And um, There's not many situations I can't get out of. And it's not because I'm a liar, it's not because I'm te giving false information, it's because if something has really bothered the student, I'm genuinely sorry. I don't know how to, you know, it's, something has gone wrong. But as we all know, they, um, these types of students that we're getting have, you know, saved up a lot of money. This could be their dream, this could be career university. So to be in the, the way of that, it doesn't rest well with me. So um, the first one, meet and greet. So this I take very, very serious, and day one. So the student arrives, we meet with them, and we obviously, we know they're coming, because we've done a report on Thursday at the booking meeting. We know they're arriving, there's no surprises. There should never be a surprise student arriving. So when that happens, there's a problem, and something has gone wrong. So, that's also an area that you don't show to the student because I've seen that in so many cases where the reception is like, what's your name? Sorry? Oh, we're not expecting you today. It never happens. We're expecting them. And if we're not, we have a chat in the back and then we come out and we say, no problem, test this way. You don't show the student that. So that's an area in reception that we need to always like work around. So students coming in, when I started at the English studio, I could see that there was no friendly culture, they didn't have that go-to person, the Elvis that we discussed earlier on. So the first thing I did was I stood there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and I opened the door for every student and staff member that came to the school. I had to meet everybody. I was going to be taking over a student service department, and without knowing everybody in the school, it's impossible. You need to gain trust. It doesn't happen in a day, it doesn't happen in a month, it happens constantly. I still do it every day, you know, and even looking at the title of this, leadership and management, there's a huge difference between the two. I could manage the school every day, but am I a leader? Am I doing anything for the staff? How I know I'm better at leadership than a manager is because staff will do things for me that they wouldn't normally do. They go out of their way, they'll stay late, because I understand that they're doing that in order for the the department to strive so that somebody's experience has changed for the better. So over the years, the meet and greet, it has to be done correctly. We expect them, we know their name, we stand up, we greet them, we shake their hands, we show them to the student room, we sit them down, and we talk to them about their arrival. How did the flight go? How was the weather when you got here? You're with an Irish host family, what's your host mom's name? They would 
surely know that much. Um, how was the food? Did you like it? Small questions just to build up a rapport with the student because we know things can go wrong and at the end of the day I have some sort of relation with them so I can try and recover or come to a resolution. Um, first impressions. So first impressions as well is key because you know we've discussed it before, Lee mentioned it, Lorraine mentioned it, that if you give a negative first impression, it is really hard to bounce back and change that. And um, even if you are trying, you might be trying too hard. And even if you do something really well, the student's still gonna turn around, well, my transfer wasn't there. You know, the host mom isn't nice. I can't have a shower at 11 p.m. So there's all different things that, uh, that make the first impression really important. And first of all, it's the staff, making sure that they all have been trained in customer service. We've mentioned it numerous times today that if there's one person, the market, that's doing everything, and everybody else is then undermining that slightly, not, not on purpose, but if they don't show the same enthusiasm, or even if we don't have a common understanding of what we want to deliver, then it's pointless. It's just going to, someone else is going to stop the hard work that you put in. And a problem that I faced in the last couple of months, four years in Marlborough House Oscars and now in the English studio, two different styles of first day. The English studio, when you arrive there, only short-term students arrive on a Monday. Only short-term students. They get placed and eat to class for 9 a.m. Long-term students come in on a Wednesday and they do not take lessons until the following Monday. So automatically I said, so we have students roaming around the streets of Dublin with no connection to the school for over five days. You know, it just can't work, you know. And um, so this is something I don't, I'm not, I don't like, you know. And um, I'm used to having everybody in at 8 a.m. in the morning, short term, long term. I don't understand why anybody would want to separate students. The whole idea is that you meet different nationalities, different walks of life. It's about getting everybody together. You're not going to have this, you know, this um, great atmosphere. If you're not mixing them all together, how will they even know that they're in the same school? You're stopping communication. You're stopping a connection between two people. So ideally, at 8 a.m. on a Monday morning, everybody arrives. Also, the testing. You know, I've experienced this quite often that, you know, we have one academic member testing students on a Monday morning or two. Realistically, we have a number of teachers that are all teaching from 9 a.m. So if we really, really wanted to, we could test everybody between 8 and 9. It just depends on staffing. You know, realistically, no one's working from, you know, everyone's working from nine, but before that, they're not. So if we wanted, we could achieve that. I've worked in schools where the main goal was not to have all students in at 9 a.m. taking lessons because the syllabus won't work otherwise. It will. It definitely will. And um, so the first impression, obviously, is extremely important to me. I like to bring the students on a tour. Um, of the school, just pointing out, you know, the names of the classes, the exits, the emergency exits, and also just to each department. And when you pass by Mayara in reception, Mayara stands up and gives everyone a wave. You introduce them to the social activities and make sure they know that it's happening, when it's happening. And uh, make sure you send somebody that has an idea of a bit of commercial savviness, you know, somebody that will take a photograph at the right location, somebody that knows how to use Facebook, somebody that can see an opportunity, go after it, and then use it to our advantage. So that's first impressions. These are just pictures of me throughout the years in Malvern and the English studio of opportunities to show everybody else throughout the world what we do. This is for me, feedback as well, which I'll talk about in a minute. Feedback is important. We all want it. We want positive feedback. We also need the negative feedback to be able to understand where we're going wrong and what we can change. And, but if the first impression isn't great, it's going to lead on. 
these here, I've noticed over the couple of um, the last couple of years with big language groups, they all want to visit Google or Facebook or LinkedIn and Airbnb. So I've brought you know I got a big tour of a group for uh, Google, and that was the only tour I ever got in Google because the kids all stole from the kitchens, and it was <laughs> it was wonderful. Yeah. So um, these are. These are things that I have to incorporate with the student services department, that they are not sitting at a desk all day. The idea is that they're going out with the student, that they're communicating with them personally, and nothing got to do with the academic side. Students in the school are students to teachers, absolutely. They are not students to me in any way. They're customers, paying customers, high paying customers that demand customer service. <coughs> So positive feedback. I didn't mention negative because who wants negative feedback? No one. But uh, feedback is something that I noticed in many places coming from eBay and having that constant person looking at everything you do and then once you achieve it and then maintaining it and keeping it consistent, that's when you start to enjoy it. That's when you start to see change. That's when your boss comes over and says, oh, you've got a bonus, great, well done, because 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. So there's, it's a great feeling when you know you're doing something right and you have the evidence there to prove it. So likewise with uh, social activities and also your social media, I think feedback is in the photograph. It's in the faces of the students. It's in the social program. It's the daily updates that you're putting in to the student experience. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> I'm sorry guys. Last week was sorry. That's got a point. Sorry guys. Sorry guys. And then last week was the returning business because Sometimes it's really hard to measure how you return, get return business when dealing with short-term students and really long-term students, language groups as well. And it is all based on the facts that, I, you know, the customer service, the meet and greet, the first impression. I have been a witness to returning business and the perfect example are the language groups working with large agents. If you understand the nationality, understand what they want. We know the difference between Italian students and Spanish. They like to enjoy themselves and go a little bit wilder than the Austrians and the Germans. They like organization. They like nothing to go wrong. When you start to understand what the groups want, and when you start to achieve that and you get the feedback saying 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, that's when they'll send you another group. That's when the teacher back in Austria tells the other school that the school is fantastic, you need to go here. That's when they'll start to know your staff by name and that's when you build the culture. Thank you.